in this video i am going to tell you a brief description for the ideal bernoulli beam theory and in the subsequent videos i will give you the finite element approach for the ehlers bernoulli and then the matlab coding for this ehlers bernoulli beam so let us start let's start with this so our courses would be the solid mechanics or the theory of linear elasticity and then the finite element method and matlab coding so here we are going to start with the ehlers bernoulli beam theory so our assumptions for the ehlers bernoulli beam theory the first assumptions implies the fiber in the transverse normal directions are in stretchable so we will understand this the fiber in the transverse normal directions are in stretchable what this states we will understand this point so first here it is our x axis and it is our z axis and it is the undeformed configuration of the beam it is the neutral axis shown here and what we are telling transverse normal so it is our transverse normal why we are telling this transverse normal because the neutral axis is perpendicular to this section to this plane so we are telling it a transverse normal or somewhere we are using this as a plane also we are telling plane sections okay so here it is showing the deformed configuration so when it will deform the transverse normal would neither get a stretch nor compress so the deformation first let us state you let, let me tell you horizontal displacements or displacement along the x axis we denote it with u of x here which would be the function of here this beam we have shown in the two dimensional x and z so it is the xz plane so here it is a function of x comma z horizontal displacement is a function of x comma z and simply we will write denote with u and the vertical directions displacements uz would be the function which we will show it that it would only be the function of x but not z so simply we will write it with w so the in stretchable part as in this assumption the transverse normal will not get stretched means it is rigid so deformation at any point here suppose it is point 1 point 2 point 3 each and every point would have the same displacements or same deformations okay so therefore the displacements in the vertical directions would only be the function of x but not z okay so we understand this assumption no so in short in this first point what we understood that u of z which we write as function of it is a function of only x so
what this implies that a two dimensional plane can only be represented with the 1d so two dimensional radius to 2d reduced to one dimensional one dimension means neutral axis a euler bernoulli beam theory can be represented with the help of a neutral axis only okay and also if you use it is w of x then strain along z would be del u z by del z and hence u z is a function of x only so we can write it del w x by del z and the partial derivative of x with respect to z what it would be it would be equals to zero so strain along z is zero now coming to the second assumption what it states the plane sections remain plane before and after bending so now we will discuss the second point the plane section remains plane z this is x this is our beam okay now when our beam will deform suppose it it got deformed it is the neutral axis suppose It is a neutral axis. So plane sections before bending. Suppose this section. It is the plane of this section, cross section. And after bending, one one prime. Suppose we have given the name. So how it is? If we see this section only. One one. so before bending and after bending here it is before bending and here it is after bending so before and after bending it is remain plane so what here plane signifies it signifies that it is not getting deformed or displaced in this man okay and in the section at each and every point of the beam is linearly varying is linearly varying not quadratically or cubically okay so this should be considered in our mind that it is linearly varying okay so when we will have a larger view let's let us see it we have just taken a tangent to this neutral axis and this is the horizontal so it will make del w by del x similarly here it would also show del w by del x okay now the beam horizontally deformed in the x direction okay so 
so this point this point here shifted to this point this point here shifted to this point this point shifted to this point in this way so displacement occurred in the horizontal directions and how that displacement occurred that displacement varied linearly so here this states that u of x is hence from the neutral axis we considered this variation as z so u of x would be minus z times del w by del x okay so the second assumption what it implies the linear variation of the section so plane sections remain plane before and after bending it signify us that u of x horizontal displacements would be at any section would be minus z times the slope of that p del w by del x okay from here also we can find out the epsilon x in a strain in the x direction which is nothing but del u x by del x and if you will double derivative with this means single derivative u of x if we will consider here then it would be minus z times del 2 w by del x square now coming to the third assumptions plane sections remain perpendicular to the neutral axis here plane sections remain plane and plane sections remain perpendicular to the neutral axis before and after bending so before bending and after bending it remains perpendicular so let's see what is this study plane sections before bending the plane sections or transverse normal is perpendicular to the neutral axis and after bending if you will just make a tangent here and then make a normal to it so it is also perpendicular okay so before bending and after bending it is perpendicular so if we just have a horizontal line so it will make an angle with the tangent what would be this because this neutral axis we have told i have told you that this neutral axis whether it is undeformed or deformed would represent w of x and displacement function reduced so now it would if, if, just represent a function of x displacement wx so here when it get deformed and when we take a tangent to it so it would be the slope so it is del w by del x if you take any tangent at that point with the x axis so it would become del w by del x okay so here it is del w by del x now before bending it is this was the normal so it will make with this also del w by del x so plane sections before bending after bending remains plane and perpendicular so plane sections perpendicular after bending and remain perpendicular before bending so this implies the shear strain gamma of xz would be equals to zero means only bending pure bending case would be here only and no shear deformation occur no shear deformation occurs okay
So our third assumption, what we summarize is with this, that only shear strain, here the, sorry, the shear strain would be zero and only the deflection deformation due to bending would takes place. So no shear strain, no shear strain or deformation. Deformation. Now the fourth assumption is what? The thickness of the beam is much smaller than its length. That implies that L length by H that ratio would be much much greater than 1. Okay. Or in the another manner, L by H should be greater than 15 to 20 in general we state. So this is the basic theory regarding the Euler Bernoulli beam. We have the four assumptions here. The first assumptions we have discussed and that finally gives the two dimensional beam which was the xz plane to a one dimensional which becomes a function of w of x then the second assumptions that gives that the u of x would be minus z times del w by del x means linear variation in the horizontal space each and every point will vary linearly then the third assumption, what it states that the plane sections remain perpendicular to the neutral axis before and after bending. Means no shear deformation is cons considered there. So therefore, no distortion would occur. Okay. So the shear part would not be included in the Euler Bernoulli beam. And the fourth assumption that the thickness or the depth of the beam is much smaller than its length. So L by H is much much greater than 1. So these were the these were the points which we have discussed regarding the Euler Bernoulli beam and in the next video we will discuss the finite element approach for the Euler Bernoulli beam. Till then goodbye thank you.